Hey guys, Tara here, bring you a whatever you want today. We are on Colodney Firma. Playing for you spawning on the left, we have Captain S. Price as Austria. He's straight away going for Jaeger Infantry. Pretty unconventional commander. Oh, he, he used to play this a long time ago. I think I have a game cast of him. Uh, there's this Devil's Brigade where he used this on Famineville for a really long time ago. But he seems to be a fan of this. Also has the Stuka Close Air Support, extremely powerful ability, and yeah, get a lot of infantry, the uh, T-43s. Which are pretty good against Soviets, especially a Soviet player using snipers anyway. On the right hand side we have Frost, who has Shock Rifle Frontline, Soviet Shock Army, and Shock Motor Heavy Tactics. So I think we might be seeing some Shock Troops this game, hopefully. Lonely Firm is not a bad map for the old shockies, and unfortunately with the guard dom and penal dominant meta, we just haven't seen many shock troops for a long time, which is a shame, because they're quite a fun unit to use. With these players at the top of the leaderboards, I think Captain Price, maybe like rank 12 last year, Frost rank 20 Soviets, this should be a very good match. Oh, Uraz, is he going to beat him to the house? Oh, not quite. And then he had a fast retreat to that one. And the price had to stop his machine gun going for the cap, though, so. This is going to cause a few issues. There was our early resources. Meanwhile, this is all being captured by these combat engineers. Pirates run straight for the cutoff. Combat engineers have just been wiring up a storm here. And they're going for the old sandbags on the cutoff. Get caught in the act. He's trying to stay at long range. Yeah, and he wants to go to the heavy cover. And now the pioneers use that opportunity to get close. And he should win in close range. Conscript's coming to support. But I mean, the damage to the Dark Price got that cut off. Also, got control of that central VP, so Frost is currently not getting many resources. Yeah, he doesn't want to lose the fuel as well. Oof! Takes a long time to cap this. So a small disruption to Frost resources. Also know he's gone for four cons. Pretty classic con spam. Taking the time to actually kill these sandbags as well. In fact those sandbags still there tell you that this is not a winter balance mod game. Still auto match. A few of the top players have returned though. Just to uh, shake off a bit of rust before the bounce patch arrives. Which, you know, should have been in February, should have been happening very soon, but unfortunately got delayed for some reason. Tigrin is maneuvering themselves into the retreat path of this conscript squad. Molotovs here. What's the squad? I mean, it takes a bit of damage. Reposition. Gonna drop one model. Two models. Oh, pretty good trade on night. Oh, no, it's alright. Three con models for two green models. That's okay. I suppose he's spending munitions on Molotovs in the real. The fact that he has Molotovs. He's gonna toss another one here. Doesn't look like it. This model here, this this one that died, kind of looked like he was about to possibly made just when he died. Posture, oh, he's gonna try to throw it on the super low health squad. Gets one model, and that's G43s for price. Yeah, this is like against Soviets. I say G43s are the most effective because if you're up against Brits, you know, they're just going to get double brains on their Tommies. 
And you're never going to be able to get your grenadiers close enough to beat the Tommies with the G43s. You're also unlikely to catch the Tommies, you know, on the move. So firing on the move G43 is not going to be that useful. Generally, find them behind cover, long range. So it's you know, G40, uh, the uh, LMG42 is good enough to hold its own against uh, double Breens, but G43s really can't do the same. And then against USF double bar riflemen. Basically, do the same job, but uh, a lot better than G43 Grins, so I wouldn't recommend it against them either. It just leaves Soviets, really. Saw the wire there coming into effect. So yeah, I'm surprised you could get out that door, honestly. Ready for assignment. <laughs> Maybe he won't be able to now. Mine up there on the road, perhaps expecting the TG2 to come around this way. Enemy forces on the right captain in the house. Trying to burn down the church. Mm, it's going to take a long time to do with the handheld flamethrower. And he's going to get found by these commies. He didn't get the job done there either. Conflicts approach from multiple angles. Can't suppress them both. Molotov's force machine gun out. And I believe Molotovs are the same as the Yokoduri flame grenade in that when they land, they actually do like. I think it's 10 damage? straight away and then I think it's six or eight damage a second after that so yeah when when the Molotov lands on them you can notice that they do take quite a lot of damage a lot more than the uh, regular damage per second tick and that is why I can't I can't get a while ago I was going to do like a video on grenades but really Came to fruition. The enemy has taken our supply sector. Well, I think this uh, pioneer has perhaps been forgotten about. Price loses it there. Did that? The maxim went down in the garrison as well. So I'd say that's a bigger pickup. There's a new maxim. Is it like 60 more manpower? I suppose he did lose the munitions because that. I only had the sweeper, but I'd say it's pretty good trade for price. Probably gonna have to rebuild the squad though, need those sweepers against Soviets. She's so gotta be so careful with those demo charges. Can I really in the game for you? Oh, I didn't even notice, but this mine did go off. Forced away that squad there. Oh, see, I did watch Price's stream the other day, and I think, oh, that was in a 2v2 game, but he went for four squads of Panzer Grenadiers. So Price is a notorious blobber, so perhaps that's his idea just like blob up all his greens and Panzer Greens and just like charge at his opponent. Frost is going to have to be. Good with his suppression, but obviously losing that first maximum does set him back a wee ways. And shock troops alone are going to have trouble dealing with a blob of like three G43 Grandiers and P Greens. P Greens get around the side of the Molotov, easily win at this range. Ooh. And now he switches directions with his machine gun and he's got his support up here to force away this conscript. Obviously Foss was trying to come in from two angles again. Get the same trick he used earlier but Price was wise to it. He ended up costing himself quite a few miles on that Green Deer squad but probably worthwhile to avoid losing that garrison. 
Bryce is a very good fuel control. I don't, I don't know if he's been cut off once. Grows to and, support uh, us. What, what buff was that? Oh, he's got ambush camouflage. My god. Oh, I, sh I wish I knew what the uh, buff on this was. I think they get accuracy buff. I think it's 25% accuracy for their first uh, burst. So, I believe that's how it goes. So, I, uh, yeah, I think it's something like that. But very rare to see, and I do enjoy ambush camouflage. Maybe if the uh, camouflage was a bit cheaper, you might see it a bit more. It's quite, you know, 30 munitions for us here. Usually quite strapped for munitions in the first place. It can be quite hard to afford it. And there we go, first light vehicle T-74 Frost. And a tier 3 down for price. It'll be interesting to see what it gets from it first. Maybe if flat pans it. About a minute away from the fuel for that, so if we can just not lose too much to this T70 in the meanwhile, we could be in a pretty good position after that. We are losing a sector. Here comes T70. Looks like it's going to take a Faust. It's going to keep this stationary, try to maximize the accuracy, hope to wipe that Grenadier. And he doesn't quite get the kill there. Backo probably uses self up here. He's got enough munitions. Yeah, he's gonna peer off that engine crit. Yeah, uh, didn't get the neutralized. No cutoff play there by Frost. That's a mistake. Wait, what did he do with that conscript squad? There was an LK okay, retreated it. Yeah, I mean, I think he probably could have gone for the neutralizer there and then retreated it. Maybe, maybe he thought some squads were up here and uh, would have lost that squad if he tried to go for the neutralize. He's playing it safe, doesn't want to lose a conscript, but the opportunity was there to go for the neutralizer. And at a critical time as well, just before Price was about to hit his vehicles. And he's actually going for a Stug first, not bad idea I suppose. Problem with going for flak pans, obviously it does pretty well against the T70. But then the Soviet player usually goes for SU76. SU76 outranges the Stug by 10. I mean, oh well, yeah, it does, but. <laughs> but I mean, then your flak pans is kind of not that good against the uh, SU76. SU76 going for attack ground into the smoke. Smoke, there's no smoke kind of backfiring on him here. Yeah, he gets out of there. That was so risky. Try to stick around under that mortifier. And Stug's going straight down the road. No, T70 heard that. Perhaps that piece of cover being crushed there decided to get the hell out. Enemy forces capturing supply sector. You know, he, he's 10 grenades. We've got some mines. No tank grenades yet from Frost. And he's going for a Zis. Fair enough. And yeah, no, I didn't really mention it. Shock troops, but they are there in the south, locking down that territory. Do you see any heading to the north? He's repositioning, trying to hide behind the cover. Sure got its way there, looks like Frost was anticipating that. Gets out of there in the nick of time. And uh, Price doesn't want to... Just want to head up here again, I mean he's already run over one mine over here. I don't think he's swept up there since. Or well, recently, at the very least, so... I don't want to risk losing him. I mean, if he lost this piece of armor right now, he'd be in deep, deep trouble. He's got to play conservatively, at least until he can afford another tank, and then he can take some more risks. But losing his tank now would probably result in the end of the game. This 
the grenade. Of course, it's the soft retreat allows these shock troops to get a little bit closer. And uh, there you can see those PPSH is so powerful in close range. But uh, this isn't too far to go, honestly. There's no too long of a retreat path, and I think maybe Price Bleach's Vet 3 G43 Greens could hang in there with the shock troops, but that is not the case. In those situations, you kind of prefer to have the LMG to just try and do as much damage to the shock troops as they approach. Maybe drop one or two models and then retreat. And he switches his locations with these shock troops, forcing away the pioneers. Shock troops are actually doing a really good job here in the south of the map. That is probably where you want to operate them. There's lots of little spaces where you can ambush your opponent. You get a cover as well. It can work for you. Tried to toss that grenade into the retreat path and uh, didn't really work. See in the north once again. We've got the Zis up here now though. Trick coming up. Right as the Zis is repositioning. And Strick going in for the kill, Zis. Oh, something died. Conscripts. Very close to this, making it very hard for him to line up the shot. Trying to use attack ground through the hedge. This finally gets a shot off. Still no anti tank grenades. That is a big problem for Frost. Should have got anti tank grenades by now. We'd be able to bring in these conscript squads, get a snare. Probably would have been the end of the ship. I know he's been quite uh, strapped for manpower so far, but. Probably should have got those AT grenades, especially when you got this many conscripts. Makes sense, it looks like this is where he lost his squad. If I had to guess, I'd say that's to a bundle grenade. EPs. Price slightly behind, 50 TPs or so behind. Very interesting. See what Frost goes for next. He's already got enough fuel for the Ice 2. Still, you know, nearly four command points away from the Ice 2. Is he going to go for the KVA? It might be a bit greedy. Maybe SU 76. Be interesting. That will be interesting. Big old blob, and this is exactly what I thought was going to happen. Just blob up, try to get these wipes. But a good, good reaction there by Frost bringing his T70. And also doing the Zis Barrage. This Barrage is different to the SC76 Barrage. It actually has a much better AoE. As it should, I mean, it does cost quite a lot of munitions. Ooh, shock troops in big trouble, they're just getting minced. Flak Panzer wants to chase this sitting up. Gets its first shot off. Shock troops somehow get away on four models. Extremely lucky Flak Panzer also gets away on half health. He really was in jeopardy, I suppose. Munitions capture here. I mean, this does have a lot of munitions abilities. In fact, it's basically all munitions abilities. Oh, could he have gotten greedy here? One more shot. Probably wouldn't have killed him. I don't know. Maybe. Here comes T70. Sandbags there, like protecting those green ears. Looks like they've got a Faust off as well. Just facing the wrong direction. Whoopsie daisy. Nice managed to get the cap down here. See now, sweepers. Good play. This is a very likely demo charge spot, so. Get to send a sweeper squad down there. A 
Looks like Frost went for another squad of combat engineers and is this to replace that lost conscript. Oops, got a bit of lag there. Oh my. So both these places getting a bit of a camp going here. Just hearing me try to shoot through the hedge. I don't know why it just doesn't try to go around. Well, that's why it runs over to Hellamine. Oh, that bait. That bait. Oh, he could lose the squad for the trouble, but. Oof. Oh my god, it gets away. I think maybe if he chased with those shock troops, it might have got the kill there. Oh man, I didn't even see that there. I mean, it was on the edge of my screen and there was a few world objects, but that was some <laughs> top quality stuff by Price. Nice bait onto that teller. Oh wow. Nice mortar shell on there. Use all his munitions though, a lot of it on those mines. It's a shame because uh, once you mod up, that flare is pretty, pretty damn useful. Tactical advance by Price used to send his blob around to the north. They are sprinting like crazy. Is this going to be the flanked or end all flanks? Where is the support? Shock troops heading up there now. But he does not have enough to stop this blob. Our scripts treats. There's a little bit of negative cover here though. I don't think he's going to be able to get away. Oof. That's what I was talking I was dead right. I, I can't believe I was right. That's exactly what he's going to do. Just blob up with all these... Uh, all these units try to get those wipes on overextended units. So it's usually a pretty safe play to make, you know, sending a squad of conscripts up here, leave them to defend that VP behind some sandbags, but perhaps you should have seen uh, this blob heading up in that direction from the extra line of sight from the garrison. They had retreat, maybe you just didn't notice it. It is a Panzer IV, so he's got all three units from his tier 3 now. Run away there. He levels the church. And there we go. Frost has made it all the way to 13 CPs. He's definitely lost a bit of steam though. Uh, price for another squad of pioneers after losing that flamethrower squad. He needs at least two pioneers to repair this many medium tanks. So that is very good. Now, I mean, does he have enough manpower to spare to go for a munitions cache? That would be the dream. Ooh. Oh my god, man, Frost has suffered so many losses. Look at this, he's down to 44 supply. Look at those conscripts and now... Oh, but the double is this! The double is this in the base, take down the Flak Panzer. I thought there was just one up here, I wasn't really paying attention, but the second one was there too. Probably realised his uh, shock troops were going to be chased on retreat. Repositioned those Zisk guns up there and took down the Flak Panzer. Close to even trade though, you know, shock troops do actually cost more manpower than a flak panzer. And here is the IS-2 being upgraded with the machine gun as well. Price is quite decent. Poor position though to fight this. Stug is pretty good against the IS-2. You've got to get it to vet one though and make use of the target weak point. The sector has been cut off. 
once you do it, it's actually uh, very, very strong. You jam the sinks turret. I mean, it already has a really slow rate of fire. Jam its turret and make it not fire for even longer. So, pretty good. He just hasn't found any missions to upgrade this Panzer IV with the machine gun. Without the machine gun, this Panzer IV is just not that strong against infantry. There's two and this heading up to the north. He's going to leave one this camped here with the camouflage as well. Looks like there's going to be a bit of a scrap here in the north. Conscripts do finally have anti-tank grenades. Have you seen him throw any of them yet? No, I don't think so. But you would certainly expect it. If you're a price. The little strip finally opens up on the ice too. It's quite a conscript just getting minced here by the vet too. Hands of green ideas. Tactical movement once again. Sprinting onto the cutoff, chasing down the anti tank gun and this mortar, forcing it away. A lot of mines. So, this is where all of Frost Munitions are gone. He's just spam mines all in defensive positions. Nice to go off the Panzer IV here. Drug coming up from the side. Nice to disengaging. Oh, is this using tracking? Actually, spots the Stug. Stug gets one more shot off, though. So does the Zis. Nice to say, a match range. Doesn't want to get fousted here. Still camped on that cutoff. Yeah, just mincing those conscripts. Oof. Is he going to lose his eyes too here to the Stug? Gonna fall for the bait. It's full coming in now, but a bit late. The opportunity to come in was uh, earlier. Nice yeah, two was up here. Perhaps he forgot about it. Doesn't really matter too much. I mean, I think if he went for the dive on the ice too, he would have probably killed it, but would have lost one of these two tanks. So I mean, probably worthwhile, but. There could also be mines up here as well. More constructs coming to support. Let's just kind of play it safe and fair enough. And that is a KV-8. <laughs> Another Stug for Price. Stug is also very good against the KV-8. But it looks like uh, Frost doesn't want to go for that tech, doesn't want to vest the fuel. And this can also crush. With that heavy crush, it's going to just run straight through these trees. That's the Panzer Green it is. Quickly forces them away. I'm just going to run to these greens. Still very out to get two though. And he's gonna take engine damage right here. This sits up. And he's gonna take a anti-tank grenade. Maybe one more shot's gonna land. No. Yes. No. <laughs> but second, second stroke heading down after the KV8. It's still for a couple of seconds here. I don't know if he hears this through the fog. He does now. Positions it. Switches to the 45mm gun. And uh, he's got no support. Ice 2 coming down from the north. Looks like the Stug's going to be able to pick up this KV-8. Ice 2's not going to get uh, a kill on the MD-42 in return. Here it goes. And this is actually going to die now. Oh no, that is a shame. Here it goes.
So he's gone for a third squad of pioneers for the repair speed. Yeah, maybe, maybe he just needs to get a munitions case. He's floating. He's been floating, you know, at least 300 manpower for the last few minutes. Yeah, access to that is too close. Yes, support strafe could be uh, could be useful taking down this. And how did this get engine damaged? Doesn't really matter. Guys, tactically mo moving <laughs> straight forwards. Those tactics, though. Tough. I don't think they can fire whilst they're sprinting, so that is why well, this isn't completely overpowered. Oof. Nice too easily could have taken out both those squads there. And that is another KV-8. Looks like Stugan Panzer 4 heading after size 2. Is this in a pretty good position though? Like both this is in very good positions. Going to be able to get away. No conscripts in support there for the anti tank grenades. He's What's he doing with this KV8? I think. Going for the. A bit of base killing action. Now, yeah, a few squads here low. It looks like he's heading that way. This is very dangerous. Yeah, he did, he did hear all those wheel objects. He crushed through fog. And there's the squad. For the Faust and the retreat path, Panzer Ford doesn't have that good a chance to penetrate KV8 from the front though. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, <laughs> well, we get to see it come good there. Oh my god, bounce, bounce, bounce. And bounce again. Both these tanks didn't get repaired to full. Is this going to be an engine crit? But he should be able to back away. He's very close to his base. A lot of pioneers here as well. He's going to back away though to quite a safe distance. Oh, there's this coming up and uh, just knocking him out. Looks like these guys have been capping up here in the north. Pioneers going for the cap in the south. This price is getting very long VPs, 141 left. Yeah, everything's being maneuvered down here by Foss, but... Foss can just back into his base. Not a pressure to stay around here. Incendiary artillery on the center, wow. Let's take a fast go. Engine crit now. Ice 2 taking a lot of damage. Explosives rear armored P4. Could this be the end of the Ice 2? Second shot coming in now. Two backs away. Perhaps expecting uh, anti tank guns support, but that actually wasn't the case. So once again, Price playing it safe. Perhaps costing himself a kill. Still coming down from the center of the map now. So three positions, got the camouflage on. Don't know if he's got a line of sight here, there's still a tree. Goes connects with it now. It's over a mine. Oh, could this be the killing blow? No, Pensafor's going to be able to get away. Nice to extremely low as well. And that's a Vet 3 Stug. Let's take a look at its variancy bonuses. More armor. Slightly faster reload. It's already got pretty really good reload in there. Vet 3. Even faster reload. Reversi buffs. Attack, 
Price hanging on, got that northern and central VP. So this one's just going to be a drag it out match, I think. Both players contesting the VPs. Price now invests finally into an anti tank gun. The tank gun's not, not the best against the KV 8. Obviously, you can just uh, come forwards, get a bit of flame AoE on them. Of course, it's the anti tank gun reposition. KV 8 is uh, disproportionately good against team weapons like that. This is stupid going. Man, look how fast it is, though, eh, with all those. You don't see buffs. Con's capping in the north. We are losing territory. When did this P-Wings die? Did I, did I miss that? Looks like these guys just uh, go in full repair mode right here. Third squad of combat engineers for Frost as well. He's also feeling constraints of trying to repair this many heavy tanks in his case. Ambush camouflage from the MG42. A lot of damage on the Ice 2. Oof, could this be the end of the Ice 2? Strug chasing, victory Strug. Look at that speed! It's blitzing down the road. This is there. He doesn't quite have sight. Oh my god, he just can't quite get the shot off. Those two backs behind the shot blocker. Both Strugs switch targets to the KV-8. Looks like he's going to take down the KV-8. Just needs one more shot to penetrate. Oh, but he bounces! Or did that connect with the sandbag? Either way. Could be the end of the Stug now as well. No. Didn't quite have the correct arc on that Zis and I'm imagining he'll either use merge on some conscripts or treat this back to base. Don't want to lose your vet three Zis. So yeah, much faster reload it. Get both vet two and vet three. As well as a bit of a penetration buff of it three. Didn't know I got plus five barrage range though. I've never tried. Generally, it's not that good an idea to try use the barrage at max range. Yeah, anyway, he's tactically moving once again. The squad up here for the VP neutralize. He's really feeling the pressure. Just over a hundred VPs left for price. Manpower float is gone now. He's gone for another squad of pioneers. Four pioneers. Which do occupy a bit of our population cap space. Oh, I think there's six, yeah. Five. Slightly more than common engineers. I think Royal Engineers are also very cheap. Let's get the ambush camouflage in the center, locking it down. He's got actually a command bunker up here. Allows him to reinforce on the front lines. And that is a Katusha. Try to target the machine gun and he doesn't want to do it. Oof, the uh, last rocket almost did the job, but now reinforcing off that bunker, he's repairing the bunker back up. It's going to help him control the center. And of course those bunkers don't occupy any population space in like a half track. It's a good way to use your manpower in the late game. Pack out there one now. Is it coming in from the side? Looks like KV is going to go down here. Yeah, that was reckless. He just keep keep driving, get around the side of that pack. Didn't, didn't manage the micro there. Machine gun does get cleared out, but 
I mean, the weapon's just there for recruiting. Can easily reinforce, doesn't really matter too much. But perhaps Frost's micro letting him down a little bit there. But he's getting a lot of veracity onto these anti tank guns. Like this one, I think, is just like. Enemy forces are capturing our supplies. Half a shot away. In fact, he could take a little bit of damage on this and probably get to Vet 3. Couple weapon crew shots might do it. Yeah, constant try come through the north, but the Panzer is out there locking it down. Quite continuously out of munitions though. Maybe he should have put down a munitions cache. Especially when you're playing this commander. He's been making pretty good use of the tactical advance or tactical movement, but remember this doesn't you can read right in the, the description doesn't work for anti-tank guns. Should obviously be pretty broken, but <laughs> oh, triple cap for price quickly ticking down possibly piece. And this is gonna be the end of this combat engineer squad, I think. Yep, there it goes. Vet 2 stood down here now. What's, what's, what's he doing with his munitions? Got G43s on this fresh grenade as well, okay. That's it. SU85. This is second tier 4 unit. SU85 does outrange the stroke. Oof. With their shots connecting, Stroke has to retreat for repairs. Luckily, he's got four pioneers. It shouldn't take too long. Where's Frost uh, lost that extra combat engineer? Sentry artillery being called down on the bunker or you know, on the center. Scatter is alright. Okay, coming in on the anti tank gun. Oof, good first volley. Could be the end of the pack. Maybe should have reversed this. Avoid that uh, spin around time. Got to come out of there a bit quicker, but that's alright. He's Tango setting up now. Oh, I, oh, he's got the munitions for target weak point. But he doesn't use it. Fails to penetrate on that shot. Oh, whoa, the Stug's rate of fire, they just knocked down the SU-85 so quickly. This didn't quite get there in time. They don't, they all, they move really slowly in their in camouflage mode. Unlike Rakitans when they have the uh, V-1, so it can be hard to sneak up on units, but he, he could be trying. He honestly could be trying to sneak these insane guns into an aggressive position in the center. Try to ambush these Strugs. He's going for another caddy though. Looks like he wants to just barrage the VPs. Try hold onto the VPs, try to tick out Price that way. Another option could be to go for... Oh, I don't know. I'd say go for a T-34. Or two. But there's still that Panzer IV. Yeah, you'd have to kill this somehow for the T-34 to work properly and oh is he gonna lose the squad? Okay coming in on this oh, I'm not on the center. Oh these G43s which just charge forward with tactical movement, knocking out one of the this the second barrage! War Oh takes down another model Nice twos down here as well. That was, uh, I don't know which tank gun was. I think they were both Vet 3 at that stage anyway. Oh, a nice follow up there by Price killing it. Decent chunk of manpower that Frost's not going to be getting back. 
He's got to kill the mortar as well. What's the problem with Frost Strategy not having a machine gun in the center? It's just allowing Price to charge up there with his G43 greens on the sprint. Do quite a lot of damage to him before he can react. As they are too, uh, too far away from Vet 3. I'm not getting plus 10 range of Vet 2. Whoa. That's when it gains its uh, reload buffs. A few speed buffs as well. So that means he now has the same range as the Shadow, right? Usually he has 40 range, plus 10, take it to 50. Okay, you're coming in on the machine gun. Is he finally going to be able to kill it? Perhaps, Ice 2 coming in. Got rid of the bunker, so no more reinforcements. And there it goes. So yeah, he tried to use target weak point there, but I think he lost sight of the Ice 2. Didn't actually end up firing it. Now second caddy going after the any Whoa! Just knocks out that pack in one fell swoop. Looks like he's heading up to try and kill this now. Tactically moving forwards. And yeah, he doesn't actually meet that uh, HP requirement. Oh, he tried to go for a Zis brush and he's just going all in here. Two Stugs and the Panzer IV, but everything's bouncy. He's got these defensive mines still in place. Oh, but it backfires, runs over his own mine, receives engine damage. That could be the end of his eyes too. And the Zisk got cleared out by all these uh, supporting troops. And that's probably it for Frost. So these tanks going after the caddies now. That was blood. And he surrenders. Well, I think uh, Frost just didn't get enough done with those two KV-8s. I think that's where he started to lose a lot of steam and Price started to pick up the advantage. And then Price making good use of the tactical movement with the G43 greens just charging straight up the center. Frost not having a maxim there. Now Price to continuously just run in here, do heaps of damage. Go for the second caddy, perhaps a bit greedy. And also pretty bad control of his uh, S-35 up here. All those factors combined, you know, Price just endured and came back. Very impressive stuff by him. Anyway guys, I'll wrap on that. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.